Well, good afternoon and welcome. I'm Dr. Victoria Ramirez, the Executive Director of the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our annual meeting, which highlights our work and accomplishments from this last fiscal year. I am so pleased to welcome those of you who are joining us in person. Here at our temporary Riverdale location, we have some of our board and foundation members, Mayor Frank Scott of Little Rock, Mayor Terry Hartwick of North Little Rock, and select museum staff members. Being mindful of everyone's health and comfort level, we limited the number of people joining us in person today. And to those of you joining us virtually, thank you. We are counting down the moments until we can see you again in person safely. Last fiscal year is one we will remember as being together yet apart. We reached out to the community through virtual programming. We continued to host foundation and, bo and board meetings, also all virtual. We stayed in contact with our loyal stakeholders and members through digital and print material. And as a staff, we closed our office and worked remotely for a good portion of the year. Yes, we were not together, but I certainly hope you did not feel apart from your art museum. Upon reflection, it was a successful transition year, and it's my privilege to introduce our leadership to provide a snapshot of our accomplishments. Today, you will hear from Mayor Frank Scott, Van Tilbury, Chair of the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts Board of Trustees, Warren Stevens, Chair of the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts Foundation and Co-Chair of the Capital Campaign, and Harriet Stevens, Co-Chair of the Capital Campaign, Chair of the Building Committee and Foundation Board Member. Each of these dedicated leaders worked individually and with their board and committee to guide the art museum's work this past year. As you will hear from them today, their work is as much about the present as it is about the future, and we certainly have a bright future to come. And now, please join me in welcoming the mayor of Little Rock, Mayor Frank Scott, Jr. I don't need to. Well, it is indeed a pleasure to be here. Um, as I was thinking about comments today, I'm a big person on history and understanding time. Uh, today is October the 4th. Uh, some 94 years ago, uh, our forefathers and foremothers of the city uh, thought it was prudent to have uh, Little Rock's first art museum. As we fast forward now, almost close to 100 years later, uh, we are seeing a phoenix bird of sorts, arising from the ashes and understanding that it is a new day in the city of Little Rock. It is a new day as it relates to arts, culture, and entertainment. And when we as a city have leadership like Harriet and Warren Stevens that have taken the mantle to say we are going to connect our city through arts, but not only arts, but education and culture, so we truly can be a beacon of light for the state of Arkansas, and most importantly, for the South. That is the ingredients that we need as we continue to charge forward to understand that we have a bright future. And what better way to have a bright future that connects itself not only with art and culture and education, but connects itself with its own community and ensuring that this community reflects all in the community. And what better way do we understand art? Art sees no race, it sees no gender, it sees no culture, but it opens all of our minds to see a brighter day. And so I am excited when we have leadership like Van Tilbury and Victoria Ramirez who are leading this mantle to ensure that we continue to connect to our future. I see here today a dear friend uh, and Mayor Terry Hartwick. Uh, this is bigger than Little Rock. This is about Central Arkansas saying we are here 
to show the world what we're all about. So on behalf of the city of Little Rock and North Little Rock, thank you so much, Terry. We say congratulations on a successful year, a successful year of partnership, whether it's partnering with the Arkansas Cinema Society, whether it's partnering with Ballet Arkansas and the Arkansas Symphony, it is all about partnership. And the city of Little Rock is grateful to be a great partner. And as we continue to charge forward, not only have we already seen the partnership between the city and the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts, we are stronger today with our commitment and are planning for even stronger commitments as we move forward. Have a great day. Good afternoon. I'm Van Tilbury, and I have the pleasure of serving as the president of uh, the board of the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts. Thank you, Mayor Scott, uh, for your words and for your leadership for our city. Uh, the city of Little Rock has supported the AMFA for many years, and the city and its citizens was a lead partner in our new building project. So we thank you for the city's continued annual allocations uh, that support the maintenance and security of the museum and also for that lead gift. <clears throat> We're proud to have uh, Mayor Terry Hartwick with the city of North Little Rock here. He's been recognized. Uh, the city of North Little Rock also a loyal supporter. It is bigger than Little Rock. It's bigger than Central Arkansas. Uh, we're bigger than the state of Arkansas, and we appreciate your support. The AMFA board has had a busy and transformative year. I would like to thank my fellow board members for their continued commitment to the Art Museum. While this past fiscal year we did not meet in person, I appreciate each of you joining us for virtual meetings and for assisting in our mission throughout the year. What an honor it is for me to lead the AMFA Board of Trustees, because I get to work with so many talented people who volunteer their time and invest their resources to help make this institution and our community a cultural destination. I would like to thank Robert Burnett for his nearly nine years of service to the Board of Trustees, including six years as treasurer. Robert, thank you for your steady fiscal leadership, and wise counsel through the years. Let's give Robert a round. There he is. And also thank you to outgoing trustee and board secretary Dale Ronnell. Dale served for two full terms. That's eight years, including five years as secretary. Dale took great responsibility in ensuring that our minutes were accurately recorded, and she always offered sound advice as a member of our, our executive committee. So thank you to Dale. And welcome to our new board members. Odell Nickelberry, representing Arkansas Blue Cross Blue Shield. Mary Olive Stevens, a community volunteer and philanthropist. Mike Marquez, representing Merrill Lynch. And Rebecca Smith, long-term volunteer and agent with Janet Jones Company. So let's welcome those new board members. Each of these new board members brings specific areas of expertise and unique personal interests in support of our mission to be a first-in-class arts institution that represents everyone and serves all. I welcome each of you. Finally, I'm pleased to announce the members of the Executive Committee for Fiscal Year 2022, Stan Hastings as Vice President, our Treasurer, Gary Cooper, Amanda Denton as Secretary, and also want to recognize Merritt Dyke as our Chairman. So thank you to the Executive Committee. I look forward to serving with each of you in this year. So these new board members and our Executive Committee members join this distinguished list of fiscal year 2022 Board of Trustees. To all of my fellow board members, thank you for your time, your talent, and your dedication. It's a great list, uh, represents our community and state, and very excited to serve alongside each of them. In January of 2021, we had one of the most pivotal moments in our history. We announced the Arkansas Arts Center 
is now the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts. The enthusiasm was palpable. It was exciting to be on site, standing in front of the facade of the original 1937 building that reads Museum of Fine Arts and watching Mayor Scott sign the proclamation officiating our new name. And from this point forward, the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts is poised to serve our community. As Harriet and Warren Stevens, Dr. Victoria Ramirez and I shared that day, our new name does reflect our history as the Museum of Fine Arts and it underscores our commitment to Arkansas. Members of the Board of Trustees serve on individual committees that support the goals of the board and the museum. In addition to our finance and governance committees, we have a development and community engagement committee. The development committee is comprised of board members who are fundraising advocates who provide board perspective for fundraising and related programming. In the coming year, this committee will help promote AMFA's Giving Tuesday campaign as well as identify and connect staff with new individuals and corporate prospects. The Community Engagement Committee spreads the word about the new Muse Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts, encouraging membership and building excitement for the future. This past year, the committee spoke to various community groups, including the Junior Leagues of Little Rock and North Little Rock, Rotary Club 99, Life Quest of Arkansas, and the Arkansas Association of Women Lawyers Board. Outreach to the community and supporting fundraising efforts are two of the board's goals during this time as we prepare for the grand opening of the new building. I'm proud of the board's accomplishments and I look forward to continuing these efforts in the coming year. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Chair of the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts Foundation and Capital Campaign Co-Chair Mr. Warren Stevens. After Warren's foundation report, he will be joined by his campaign co-chair, Harriet Stevens, who also serves as the chair of the building committee and as a foundation board member. So please join me in welcoming our foundation board chair, Warren Stevens. Thank you, Van. Um, I know I speak for the entire foundation when I express my gratitude to you and the entire Board of Trustees for your time and dedication to the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts, and we appreciate it very, very much. I'm honored to be the chair of the foundation during this significant time in the museum's history. I'd like to begin by thanking the members of the Foundation Board for their commitment and expertise this past year. These dedicated individuals are listed on the screen. It has been a busy year for the Foundation. I thank George O'Connor for chairing the Investment Committee, which manages the Foundation's endowment. I also thank Ben Hussman and the entire Board for initiating new projects, such as updating our bylaws and this review is very timely as we prepare for the new AMFA. I appreciate Terry Irwin agreeing to chair the Governor Winthrop Rockefeller Memorial Award Committee. After discussion, the committee opted not to bestow the 2021 award during this transitional year, but we remain committed to this important and time-honored legacy. In addition to managing the endowment, the foundation owns the collection of nearly 14,000 works of art that comprise the museum's permanent collection. I thank Bobby Tucker for continuing his role as chair of the art committee, which oversees all deaccessions, purchases, gifts, and loans. This past year was an active one for the foundation's art collection. While the museum building is under construction, more than 250 works from the collection are on loan across numerous local, regional, and national venues. As an example, the Cleveland Museum of Art requested to borrow our exceptional Diego Rivera painting entitled Two Women for their 20th Century Galleries. 
The image on the left shows our painting next to Cleveland's painting by Pablo Picasso. And on the right is the cover of Crystal Bridges exhibition catalog for Crafting America. We loan four works from our renowned craft collection to this exhibition. The foundation's collections of works on paper is also exceptional and museums across the country and world continue to request loans. Most recently, the Museum of Modern Art in New York bar borrowed our Paul Cezanne watercolor for the Cezanne drawing exhibition. On the left is an image of our watercolor and on the right is a picture of the catalog. As we prepare to open the new building, we are grateful to the generous donors and artists who have offered the foundation gifts of works of art. Highlights include Don Bacardi's self-portrait from 1995 on the left, and on the right is Todd Hoyer's Untitled from the Suspended series from 2021. This sculpture was purchased with funds provided by Robin and John Horn, and we thank them for their generosity. We are grateful to the estate of Ethel Baziotis, who gifted the foundation the work on the left by her husband, William Baziotis. Finally, I am excited to announce a transformational gift from the Enamel Arts Foundation of more than 500 enamel works which span 1920 to the present. The Enamel Art Foundation is gifting their collection to four different American museums and we are very grateful to receive the largest of these four gifts. With this gift, we will have the foremost collection of modern and contemporary enamels in the country. On the right is an example of an enamel work, Edward Winter's Resurrection from 1951. With all these new acquisitions, over 675 works entered the collection this past year. The foundation continues to earmark funds to care for the art in our collection. This past year, we engaged conservation studios in New York, Philadelphia, and Chicago to clean and conserve select works of art. The slide shows, this slide shows the before and after conservation of our 16th century painting by Fr Francesco Bassano. Pretty remarkable, really, when you look at that. Here is another before and after conservation example, a portrait by George Romney. Currently, we have 102 works of art that are either fully conserved or in process. It is going to be stunning to see many of these works in the new building where they will be shown in pristine galleries illuminated by state-of-the-art lighting. In addition to serving as chair of the foundation, I am co-chair of the capital campaign. I am pleased to present an update on our capital campaign along with my wife and co-chair, Harriet Stevens. And Harriet, would you please join me? It is exciting to see the foundation's collection after conservation. And looking at these slides reminds me of the initial impetus for the new building and accompanying campaign. It was the need for modernized vaults to properly store the growing collection that began this entire project. We all recognize the imperative need to preserve the art in our collection, and our new building will certainly have outstanding storage for the AMFA collection. Of course, this incredible project would not be possible without the generosity of everyone who has contributed to the capital campaign. We would like to extend a special thank you to the Wingate Foundation, Terry and Chuck Irwin, and the Winthrop Rockefeller Charitable Trust, who have joined Harriet and me as lead contributors to the campaign. In addition to this private support, we also thank the citizens and leadership of the city of Little Rock North Little Rock, and the state of Arkansas. Along with over 280 individuals, businesses, and foundations, we collectively have created the largest 
public-private partnership for a cultural organization in our state's history. We are very grateful to the Major Gifts Committee for their ongoing dedication to this campaign. Co-chaired by Terry Irwin and Merritt Dyke, the committee also includes Curtis Finch, Ben Hussman, Michael Mayton, George O'Connor, and Bobby Tucker. Along with Warren and me, this committee has secured campaign gifts at the 25,000 and above level from over 165 individuals, businesses, and foundations. It is most inspiring that this list of current contributors includes those who are longstanding patrons of the museum and others who are supporting AMFA for the first time. I've always said that Arkansans are incredibly generous, and to that point, 99% of the donors to date live in Arkansas, with 95% living in central Arkansas. We, are, we were proud to have exceeded our previous goal of $128 million. In January 2021, we announced an increased capital campaign goal of $142 million, with $135.9 raised at that time. With everyone's help, this will not only fund the construction, but increase the foundation's endowment, which provides critical annual support for the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts. We invite everyone to join us as we work to meet this goal in reimagining the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts. And we certainly have done some major reimagining in this transformational project. Now I'm shifting gears from the capital campaign to my role as chair of the building committee. In this capacity, I work, I work alongside a small but mighty team who interface with the architects and contractors on every aspect of the construction project. Committee includes Michael Mayton, foundation member, who has been on the building committee since its inception over five years ago. Van Tilbury, president of AMFA Board of Trustees, who has served on the committee since fall of 2020. And Victoria Ramirez, who joined the committee in 2019 when she became executive director of the museum. I sincerely thank this committee and all of the professionals on this project for their hard work and dedication. Our goal is to construct the most compelling and inviting museum possible to serve our Kansans and other visitors for decades to come. I'm delighted to share a few renderings and photographs that show our progress and highlight your new Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts. On the north side of the building, the primary entrance is starting to take shape. On the left is a rendering and on the right is a recent photograph. The entire build, to enter the building, you walk underneath the second floor cultural living room to an open air courtyard. The striking second floor cultural living room is fully enclosed with large expanses of glass. The wood trim that you see underneath the cultural living room and the eaves of the roof add warmth to this contemporary facade. As guests walk through the primary north entrance, they will enter what we call the 1937 lobby. The geometry and elongated proportions of this space echoes the 1937 architecture of the original lobby. Notice the rich walnut paneling in the, on the walls and glass balconies on the second floor. These details exemplify how the lobby blends the old with the new. The main atrium spans the entire length of the building, connecting all aspects of the museum. The natural light filtering through the high clear story windows reflects off the highly polished plaster walls, creating a bright and welcoming space that will certainly inspire guests of all ages. I'm particularly excited about this space, which is a former back of house area that we are transforming into a dynamic public programming and rental space called the glass box. Featuring 18 foot high glass wall, this space features beautiful views of MacArthur Park and an outdoor terrace with native planning and seating. We imagine children and adults enjoying educational programming and performances in the glass box. It will also be ideal for private parties and corporate events. On the south side of the building, guests will be greeted by this striking roof line complete with large expanses of glass and the warm wood trim seen on the north side of the museum. 
The recent photograph on the left and rendering on the right shows the restaurant, which will feature indoor and outdoor dining and picturesque views of the museum's landscape grounds that adjoin MacArthur Park. With nearly 12 acres of grounds, landscaping will be an, an important programmatic element of the new building. The landscaping features native trees, grasses, and plantings. Walking paths create a connection between the museum and the park. A large event lawn is being installed on the south side for outdoor programming and private events. Here is an example of our planning palette, which will include trees such as Sweet Bay Magnolia and Swamp White Oak, grasses such as prairie drop seed, shrubs including dwarf cherry laurel, and perennials such as white foam flower, false indigo, and snowdrop. The new Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts is more than a place for art. We are creating a destination that fuels the economy, promotes tourism, and greatly advances culture in Little Rock and across the state. On behalf of everyone involved in this project, we look forward to continuing to update you on our progress and share more details of what you can expect from your new Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts. With a report on the museum's accomplishments during the past year, please join me in welcoming Executive Director, Dr. Victoria Ramirez. The more I see those renderings, the more excited I get. I can't, cannot wait. Thank you, Harriet. And thank you, Mayor Scott, Van, and Warren for your leadership. We appreciate the commitment of the City Board of Directors and the museum's board and foundation members during this transitional year. For any year, our accomplishments are laudable. But what is especially impressive is the continued focus on the future and ensuring all work and decisions are in support of our most exciting next chapter. Museum staff worked creatively and diligently to ensure the fiscal year ended successfully. It is now my pr privilege to share with you a few museum highlights from this past year. Let us start with museum financials from the last fiscal year, which began July 1, 2020, and concluded June 30, 2021. Our total revenue was $4.4 million, with 41% of the monies coming from the foundation's endowment. The endowment is critical to the museum budget, and as Harriet and Warren reported, this is where we could not thank our campaign contributors enough for their generosity. Campaign contributions support both the construction of our new building and increasing the foundation's endowment to help support an increased budget. We also must recognize the museum's annual donors as their contributions represent a significant portion of the annual revenue. Thank you to the individuals, businesses, and foundations for your generosity. Due to additional available COVID-related funds, government support also increased, and I want to commend our development office for, for their work on securing these special allocations. Looking at the small percentage of earned revenue underscores this was not a typical year. Earned revenue was significantly de decreased, and the small percentage represents income from virtual art school class registration, membership, and museum store sales. On the expense side, the majority of the museum budget covers personnel, security, and administration, including necessities such as support of our temporary facility, IT, and insurance. While the monies dedicated to programs and exhibitions may have been minimal this past year, I am proud that programming was not, and using virtual platforms and creativity, Art Museum staff offer, offered a host of dynamic offerings, which I'll highlight in a moment. As we plan for the future, it is our goal to increase the funds dedicated to exhibitions, programs, outreach, and marketing. With more support, we can do more. 
and we have big plans to continue to offer the highest quality programming and increase our reach and impact, all while appropriately increasing the number of staff members to support the new building. Raised funds is a key to our growth and success, and it is our generous donors and supporters who allow us to plan big. We are so grateful to our current donor base for their continued support. Contributions from individuals comprised 46% of the monies this past year. We appreciate the continued support from corporations and businesses and grant awards from both governmental and private foundations, including the City of Little Rock, North Little Rock, the Wingate Foundation, and the Alice L. Walton Foundation. This past year, we are especially grateful for the special COVID-related relief grants we received from the Brown Foundation, the National Endowment for the Humanities, Arkansas Arts Council, Arkansas Humanities Council, and the Institute for Museum and Library Services. In addition, a number of donors responded positively to our request to increase their annual support due to COVID-related losses, and we thank you. And thank you to our members. We recognize this past year was a challenging one, and we appreciate you renewing your membership and for your continued support. We always enjoy hearing from our members and donors. It's good to hear that you regularly drive by MacArthur Park to see the progress of the new building and that you've enjoyed the virtual classes and pop-up programs and events we offered this past year. But the most frequent question we receive from our members is about future programmatic plans. What can they expect from the new building? Well, we, we do want to keep some surprises to be unveiled next year. I am excited to share that our future programming will build on our past while increasing our commitment to our community and the region. Let me share with you a few highlights from this past year, some of which will provide a glimpse of what's to come. This past year, the annual Delta Exhibition Program continued. For over 60 years, the museum has invited artists from throughout Arkansas and our touch states to submit work for the Delta Exhibition. While we were not able to host an exhibition this past year, we did partner with colleagues at other museums to showcase the work of artists working in our region. The result of this partnership is a video and podcast series that we call Delta Voices, Artists of the Mid-South. The series features in the top left, you see photographer Catherine Elizabeth Patton from Memphis, and she was selected to participate by the Memphis Brooks Museum in Tennessee. Top right is Stuttgart-born artist Justin Tyler Bryant, and he was selected by us, the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts. Lower left, the Mississippi Museum of Art it selected Alexis McGrigg, who lives in Jackson. And lower right, Fayetteville photographer and educator Aaron R. Turner was selected by our colleagues at Crystal Bridges. The video series and podcast is available on the museum's new website, and I encourage you to, visit, to virtually meet these dynamic Delta artists. We continue to be committed to teaching about art and artists, and this past year we launched a new mobile app called AMFA Amplified. The app is de designed to provide deeper connections with the museum and with in-depth in information about select works, stories about artists, videos on how art is made, and more. Currently, the app features artists and works from the museum's craft collection, but be on the lookout for features on more works in the museum's collection and specialized tours on art and architecture. I am so proud of the museum's work, of the art school's work this past year. While the school did not hold any in-person classes, we creatively offered online classes in painting, drawing, metals, and ceramics. For youth, we offered sampler classes, which focused on a variety of visual arts media and performing arts activities. This past year, we continued our commitment to education by hosting the Young Arkansas Artists Exhibition. Now in its 60th year, the exhibition invites any kindergarten through 12th grade student in Arkansas 
to submit a work for possible inclusion in this, possi in this uh, popular exhibition. This year, 273 works were submitted from over 24 cities across Arkansas. Our panel of art professionals had the difficult job of selecting only 65 works. There were five per grade for the show, and we thank Courtney Bradford of the Mosaic Templars Cultural Center here in Little Rock for serving as our grand juror. Our work with public and private schools continued this past year through our virtual field trip program. Field trip offerings included a focus on art making and performing arts, and a special tour called Under Construction, all about architecture, specifically designed to introduce elementary students to the museum's new building and construction project. Led by a museum volunteer docent or educator, this tour is the ideal precursor to an on-site field trip when the new museum building opens. The museum's children's theater and performing arts department developed innovative ways to stay connected with the community this past year. Thinking outside the conventional parameters of theater, we partnered with Arkansas PBS to create and broadcast statewide the television series Blueberry's Clubhouse, which gave an opportunity for young Arkansans to continue to learn and grow at home while schools were closed due to COVID. Created for pre-K through second grade students, the series has been nominated for three Emmys, so fingers crossed. In addition, the museum's children's theater offered a series of pop-up outdoor engagements in city parks. Here you see Flurfy and Friends, our in-house pink puppet, and puppet friends bringing joy and art to park goers. Last year, the museum launched a new series called Sparking Dialogue Through Drama. Using drama as a catalyst for conversation, this program is part of the museum's social impact initiative and provides a space for meaningful dialogue about issues of identity, race, and anti-racism. Participants experience a dramatic work performed online, followed by a panel of experts across a multitude of fields to engage in a moderated discussion. And here you see actor Harper Keith, director Antonio Horn, 2019 Teacher of the Year Stacey McAdoo, and playwright Idris Goodwin. As Mayor Scott shared, we were so thrilled to partner with local and statewide organizations to offer engaging programming for the community. We proudly partnered with the Ballet Arkansas to present Winter Wonderland, a holiday-themed visual and performing arts experience along Little Rock's Main Street. This was such a special event. The program even made national news on CBS Sunday morning. Other pro partner programs included with Arkansas Symphony Orchestra and Ballet Arkansas, the production of The Soldier's Tale at Robinson Center, and we headed to Northwest Arkansas and partnered with Bentonville's Trike Theater to offer an innovative 360 degree digital experience of the production Turning Red, Choosing, Learning to Choose Love. And finally, our marketing department continued to tell the AMFA story, both near and far, securing stories on our work and the new building in prestigious publications such as Arc Daily and Design Boom. We thank our numerous local and statewide media partners for their con continued enthusiasm for the art museum. There is so much future-facing work happening at the Art Museum right now. We are so excited about our new name and our smart logo that our museum store has developed a host of items that will allow everyone to proudly help us promote the new museum. I realize it's October, but holidays are just around the corner. And our membership office is already planning for the holidays with a Give the Gift of Membership campaign. We have created a very special gift membership box that will package your gift of membership in this attractive gift box designed by artist Lisa Krenichfield. The end of the fiscal year is always a time to reflect, and I hope you are 
inspired and excited by what you heard today. The creativity and perseverance of museum staff, the generosity of our campaign contributors, donors, and members, and the dedication and future vision of our leadership, foundation directors, and board. These are the characteristics that will help ensure a successful future, a future that will include the most significant moment in our museum's history, the grand opening of the transformed new building and surrounding grounds. Before we conclude, I am honored to share a very special message for Harriet and Warren Stevens. I have a letter here from Governor Asa Hutchinson expressing his personal recognition and gratitude for your contributions making the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts a reality. I'll read part of the letter. I appreciate your vision and dedication to building a facility that will pro provide Arkansans and visitors a host of artistic opportunities. From educational courses to performance spaces to art exhibitions, your efforts are sure to have a permanent impact on our state and region, changing the cultural landscape of Arkansas. The Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts is a testimony to the success of public-private partnership, and I commend your efforts to making this possible. And to all of you joining us in person and afar, thank you for joining us today, and thank you for staying with us during this transitional year. Let us all continue to look ahead there is much, much more to come from your Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts. Have a good afternoon. Thank you.